Hey guys, Marshall with PhysioU. I'm here with Kristen, and today for the Mentoring Minute, we're going to talk about femoral neck stress fractures. In the imaging section of a current JOSP, JOSPT article, um, a case study was presented on a female runner with a femoral neck stress fracture that initially wasn't seen on x-rays, was brought to PT, um, and then that provider ended up referring her out for more imaging based on its findings. So I thought that was a great idea to bring up and talk about, so that way uh, we're all kind of aware of it. So when we talk about stress fractures, um, and when we think back at the article they wrote, when they looked at the assessment, right, they had fairly clean passive range of motion. There was pain at end range in every direction, but there's no real limitation in mobility. When they looked at some of the in, uh, internal hip to scour tests, labral tests, they were all negative. So you're kind of rolling out intraarticular pathology like labral test. We've rolled out any mobility deficit. The pain oncome, the pain onset, was one week history of kind of a deep growing pain that just started after training for a half marathon, so a recent increase in activity. Right? So all those things kind of fit with, well, potentially um, a stress fracture. Now if we throw on what's known as the female athlete triad, so it's fairly common and well known that there's these three factors that can increase the risk of stress fracture in women. Right? And one of that being low energy with or without eating disorders. Number two is menstrual dysfunction, either amenorrhea and not having a menstrual period, menstrual cycle, or more very infrequent. And then third, low, low bone mineral density testing. So in those three things would lead to a very, incre very high increased risk of stress fractures. So if we're thinking that, one of the tests we can perform is the pubic patellar percussion. So go ahead and place this on your pubic bone. Hold that right there for me. Good. All right. And then you're going to hold the patella. Tap with one or two fingers, listening for the sound, and compare that to the uninvolved side. A positive test would be a dull or a decrease in sound on the involved side versus the non-involved side. That's a sensitive test, meaning if it's negative, you can rule it out, but if it's positive, it doesn't necessarily mean they have it. So what's the point of today's mentoring minute? Really, one is just bring awareness to our female athletes especially our endurance, long distance running athletes that are coming in with an insidious onset of groin pain. Right? One, what does their physical exam look like? Are they able to hop on that leg? Are they, do they have an intelligent gait or a limp? Think of some extrinsic external factors such as their energy level, any eating disorders, um, ask questions about their menstrual um, function as well as possibly had they had any bone density testing. If you treat them one, two visits and things don't go according to plan, they're not getting better, um, it doesn't fit a pattern work where, um, that makes sense, we can always refer them out for further imaging, especially as time goes on, x-rays may pick them up a little bit more, or there's other type of tests we can look, ask, uh, get imaging for. All right, hope you guys enjoyed, and talk to you later.